Okay guys, so we are gonna talk about metallic bonding right now. Metallic bonding exists because metals have few valence electrons. When we look at the periodic table in the D block, these are the metals that we're really talking about here are these D block and P block metals. And they have very few valence electrons. They have one, two, or three. Because of that, they're not really gonna get to that eight octet very easily. Also, because of how low they are, how low down they are on the periodic table, metals tend to have a lot of electrons. And so what they do is they care for those electrons kind of collectively. So instead of sharing, owning, having, trying to steal, instead, metals take a way more sea of electron approach. They allow the electrons to roam freely throughout the metals. Now this is an important distinction. They arrange and it looks kind of like a crystal lattice, uh, but in metallic bonding, one of the most important distinctions is that this is not bonding between different types of atoms. This is one type of atom that is in, that is forming all of this metallic bond. So if this were a metallic bond, this would be only, so we're looking at our periodic table, only iron or only nickel or only silver. One of those specific elements, not a mixture. A mixture of metallic elements is something else and they do form but they do not form bonds between them. Before we go on to those mixtures we're going to talk about what we know about metallic solids. So metallic solids are highly conductive of electricity and heat. This is why we use copper wire to run electricity through our houses. This is why we don't reach in to get something hot out of the oven using an aluminum foil mitt. Aluminum foil is made of metal, right? If you reached in and grabbed a pan with only aluminum foil covering your hands, that would totally burn your hand because that aluminum foil is a good conductor of the heat. The heat on one side goes right across to the other side. Okay, that's what it means to conduct. Metals have a luster, that means that they're shiny. They're malleable, which means that if you hit a metal, it's going to dent. So we talked about ionic compounds as being hard but brittle like glass. Metal solids are hard but malleable. When you hit them with a hammer, they would dent, not shatter. That's what it means to be malleable. And they are ductile. Ductility is the ability to stretch it out into a wire, kind of like chewing gum or silly putty. If you imagine kind of pulling the gum and it makes that like long wire, that's its ductility to stretch without breaking. Different metals can be mixed together, but that is not called a bond. It is a mixture. So metallic bonding only happens between the same type of metal. Remember silver with silver or tungsten with tungsten but we can make a mixture of metals. When we mix the metals, they each retain their own properties, their own color, their own luster, their own conductivity, their own amount of malleability or ductility. All of those things stay the same for the metals, but now they're just mixed together into a mush ball, okay? At this point, we call that mixture an alloy. And in order to make an alloy, you have to heat both of the metals up into their liquid state, pour them together, stir them up, and then let them cool. And then you can make a metal alloy. There are two types of metal alloys and they play really important roles in our society. First type of metal alloy is called a substitutional alloy. A substitutional alloy replaces some of the host metal with similar sized metal atoms. So an example of a substitutional alloy mixes together copper and zinc. So when we look at the periodic table, copper and zinc are together right here. They're right next to each other, copper and zinc. So they're about the same size, but they're very different prices. Copper is much more expensive than zinc. So if you wanted to make something that had most of the properties of copper, 
but cost less. Then you would heat up the copper, you heat up the zinc, you mix them together, you stir it up, you let it cool, and now you have brass, like for a brass instrument. Bronze, like a gold, silver, and bronze for an Olympic medal, is 20% tin and a mixture of copper. Sterling silver, which you might remember if you go to like Claire's um, or you go to buy kind of a costumey jewelry, you might buy it made out of sterling silver and it's going to turn your finger kind of green. That has to do with the copper attracting uh, chlorine atoms and it from water and make this green reaction that happens on your skin. We also have probably heard of like 18 karat gold. 18 karat gold is gold mixed with silver. Now silver seems like it's expensive, but it's not as expensive as gold. So if you wanna have something that looks gold but costs just a little bit less, then you're gonna get a lower carat of gold. Substitutional alloys replace with similar sized metals. So when we're making these substitutions, we're making them very close to one another on the periodic table. We're making a substitution from something that's nearby so that the metals are approximately the same in size, but they typically have different costs. There's a different kind of metal alloy that is used in order to increase strength. Interstitial alloy is made in order to increase the strength of a metal. The most important one is steel. So you've probably heard of steel before. You should know that steel beams are what hold up most of our houses and buildings. They're what make uh, skyscrapers and freeways all possible is steel. Steel is incredibly strong. One of the strongest materials in terms of holding onto each other without breaking its malleability where it can bend without breaking. It's one of the strongest materials on earth. Steel is made from a combination of iron and carbon. And what we do is we fill some of the holes, which are called interstices. The hole, the space is called an interstice. We fill those holes with small atoms. Before we look at the picture of what this looks like in terms of the metal, I want you to picture if you have a car or a boat or a RV and you don't want it to roll, and so of course you pull the parking brake, but then to add even more stability, you put those like wood blocks under the tires in order to hold the car still. That is the effect that these, adding these small atoms to the interstices has on the metal. So this is steel. In gold, we see the iron atoms and we see that they're quite large and then we fill these interstices with these tiny carbon atoms. There are different blends of steel. If you add too many carbon atoms, you start to make the metal brittle. If you don't add enough, then the metal is too malleable. It doesn't have enough rigidity. So when you want to make a rigid steel, you add just the right amount of carbon to iron and actually different companies would have different recipes, much like uh, Coca-Cola versus Pepsi versus RC Cola. They kind of taste the same, but they kind of taste different because they have just a little different recipe. Different steel manufacturers add different amounts of carbon to different amounts of iron in order to make their steel. So in an interstitial alloy, we are adding small molecules to increase strength. Or with the substitutional alloy, we're adding similar sized atoms in order to decrease cost. So these are two different ways that we can use mixtures. Remember, these are not bonds. They're mixtures of different metals in order to help with our society. This is a picture right here of the, do you know? the Chrysler Building in New York. And you can know that it's the Chrysler Building because it actually has a steel top. And so if you've ever seen Annie, one of the things that Miss Hannigan says is you're gonna you know, clean these floors till they shine like the top of the Chrysler Building. Well, here's the Chrysler Building right here with its nice steel top. Okay, so guys, that is the end of chapter seven and eight and we are done with all of our notes for first semester chemistry. So congratulations, give yourself a pat on the back. Uh, I'm so excited for you guys. I'll see you in class tomorrow and we'll review for your final.